Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Lone Wolf on Legendary Iron Man Difficulty for War of the Chosen. My name is Saika and we're playing the game on the hardest difficulty and try to beat it with one soldier per mission. Sounds crazy? Yep, I think it is. I'm not even sure if it's possible to be honest. Operation Choking Summer is our first retaliation mission to um, again state what our objective here is going to be. We're not trying to win the mission. Um, I think there is a absolute minor chance to maybe win this mission um, if it's going to be one of the retaliations where where we are having resistance um, operatives at our side. Even then, I think it's highly unlikely. If we are fighting against um, the enemies normally, like without any uh, soldiers at our side, it's definitely not going to be winnable. We're going to go in in order to take some kills, some experience, and then get the hell out of there as fast as possible. Instead of taking an entire team, we are, however... Oh, shoot. Uh, Hogbite is tired. Um, yeah. Which means we're either going to take Roby, Specialist is wounded, or we're going to go with a Grenadier. Let's think. We just want to kill someone. Might as well take Roby here. We still don't have Mind Shields. So that's not going to work out. But I think his melee attack will give him a lot of uh, mobility. Also, the shotgun is one of the highest DPS weapons at the beginning of the game. Four um, minimum damage means we can kill all of the, the troopers with one shot, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. So it's going to be an assault. Really difficult decision. If you're only taking one character class, um, I'm not yet sure which one is uh, the... The optimal decision, I wanted to go in with a specialist, but since uh, he was shot in the very first mission, it's very difficult um, to uh, to wait for him. Good, we've just landed, and it is going to be a shit show. Roby alone, it's, we're not having any support from the resistance operators, so this is going to suck big times. Moving over here. Ooh, look at that. Direct enemy contact. Well, can't reach them, can we? So we're doing our little trick here. Ah, can't do that afterwards, but we can put it, put it here. And we need to hope that the sectoid uh, is not going to mind control us because elsewise uh, the mission is over right away. Oh, we're fighting against the Chosen on top of it. And also the Assassin. Well, it's, it's becoming better and better. It's just such a lively, wonderful experience to be completely crippled by the game. Reveals concealed units and gets into defense after first attack, but is a pretty adversary against the Templars, which is good because if we beat her, it's going to be with the Templar. Boy, oh boy. Well, yeah, that's going to be lovely. Well, we can't stay here and fight the Chosen. We, we just can't. Okay. Advent Priests, who, by the way, can also mind control. So, thanks, but no thanks. Well, the good news was we only had to fight against six enemies because there was the Chosen as well. The bad news is 
have absolutely no illusion that the Chosen would have killed us. There is Harbor Wave, um, which is a no save ability. There is uh, her normal strike, which would have been a no save ability. And we would simply have been extracted and been taken away from her. Because there is no one who can. There is no one who can wake up Roby, so he would have simply been. Yeah, extracted. Good news on the Chosen though is the following. Once the Chosen appears, two more missions are going to happen without the Chosen appearing. Third mission afterwards will have a 50% chance of the Chosen appearing. And the fourth mission afterwards will have a 100% time uh, chance to let it appear. Which means we can time it quite well. By the way, all three Chosens are on different um, on different timers. So we already lost about 23 um, of our income. And we're now fight, uh, knowing that we fight against the Wrath, uh, Wrath Maiden. The Assassin is here. By the way, um, it's good that the Retaliation mission happened in our starting location. Uh, because we can't lose the starting location. If it would have happened in any other location, we probably would have lost it. Also, retaliation missions have a six weeks cooldown, which means until the end of April, there won't be any more retaliation missions, meaning we can start to expand just a little bit. Uh, let's see how many days we do have left in the month. Only one more day, so it doesn't matter if we make contact now or, uh, or later. We got the supplies, and I would say this year is 80, this year is 90 supplies. None of it is cheaper or more expensive. You know, I mean, I'll probably go and secure the um, black side over here, if I'm totally honest. That way we would have an option to always reduce the avatar uh, project by one. So let's make contact. Costed us half of our entire intel. And we're going to start making contact to this region. Failed two missions. Got a lot done. 127 intel. And we need to make sure that her knowledge bar isn't increasing because she will be the one attacking the Avenger. And our one of look one of the main uh, reasons why we could fail this campaign, two main reasons. Number one, um, the Avatar pro uh, project gets completely out of hand. I need to think about how we can deal with that. But I think I do have an idea of what we theoretically could do. Number two, one of the Chosen decides to shoot our um, Avenger down and essentially wins the mission. And since we don't have strong enough soldiers to fight it off, we could really lose the entire campaign there. Um, in order to counter this, we, it is absolutely crucial that we're not giving her any knowledge, uh, i.e. no soldiers that she can extract, so that it takes her really, really long until she... Um, until she gets to full knowledge. That will require, however, that we also have a plan once she reaches full knowledge. And uh, for me, it um, requires to get a defense matrix going as soon as possible and essentially even prioritize uh, the building. Let's look at our dark events. Um, greater threat response. Guaranteeing reinforcements on all guerrilla ops. Yeah, sucks, but won't make much difference. We're not winning them anyways. Dark Tower is okay. Just means we will need to rest longer after the missions. This here is unfortunately absolute and utter garbage. Got to make uh, contact uh, with the skirmisher faction soon and hope that we can get between the eyes uh, to deal with the loss. 
Um, yeah. The one that I would have wanted to get is the resistance, um, the resistance operation that allows you to lose all of the mental status effects at the beginning of each turn. For now, we're taking the extra power on the Avenger. And that's pretty much it. Okay. This one here is important. We can get faction um, heroes. Plus four aim is super good. Hacking plus three isn't bad either. Alien loot. Got a lot of interesting uh, things, but first of all, we want to get the Reapers. But unfortunately, we don't have a soldier. Oh, that is bad. I wanted to get a Reaper really, really soon. So let's start with a Skirmisher. And we could could have used it with a Specialist because um, our aim is an important stat for them. Might use the Grenadier. And the sharpshooter. Grandiers have incredibly low normal aim. Giving them additional aim might be helpful. I don't think that I'm going to use either of these guys, but for now the faction hero is helpful. And I was hoping that we could make contact with the Reaper faction, because I really want to play with the Reaper. Modular Assault Rifles, Astonishing Breakthrough. Well, Assault Rifles could get an additional weapon upgrade slot uh, for 10 days. I think we're going to do that. I will begin our research immediately. Just give the word and I'll get started, Commander. In terms of engineering, we're almost done with um, clearing out the new debris and soon the resistance ring. Got to get a second engineer going soon. And we have enough supplies to build a new building. There is 110 additional supplies. So let's think about what we really, really need. Um, could use um, a laboratory for faster research because we're going to be really, really slow on the research. We could use a guerrilla tactic school also to gain faster experience, probably a good idea. We don't need resistance communications anytime soon. When we could use a training center to gain the additional um, skills, but probably also not immediately necessary. So I would say we're going with the GTS or the laboratory. Problem with the laboratory is it also has a lot of monthly upkeep costs, making our income even lower. I think the GTS immediately gives us a bonus for our for our soldiers, so that's why we're going to start building it. And by the way, nice try Klaus, but since you're the only one who can start excavating, please focus on that. Okay, we're at 250 supplies, making contact. It doesn't even look that bad for a legendary campaign. We're probably low on our experience and ranks at the moment, but I'm hoping to heavily utilize the Covert Ops missions. So once uh, this year is completed, we got a complete new faction and let's do the same for the Reapers. We need, uh, we need contact to all of them as soon as, uh, as possible.
Making contact to this region here as well has another advantage because we will get a second uh, second area that will give us supplies. There is our biggest threat, the Avatar project, which directly starts with three bleeps. Because, yep, why not? And that's our next mission. So, hacking, hack the workstation in an advent facility and gain some intel. Well, it would be nice if we could do that. I do have my doubt that that is going to be possible, however. So, if we were to take someone for a hacking attempt, it would probably be our specialist, Renman. In terms of loadout, proper assault rifle. Let's give him the med kit, just in case he gets uh, ambushed. And yeah, we might be able to at least, at least, um, finish the mission objective. So here's the thing with many of the missions. And let me get, uh, let me talk through the uh, the idea how um, the default vanilla XCOM is handling it. If you do have a normal objective, many of the guerrilla missions require you to do something. And then on top of it, you need to kill all of the advents. Now, if you only do the objective and start to evac afterwards, the mission is still considered to be failed, but the dark event that it is trying to prevent is um, is uh, is going to be prevented. You're not getting any corpses because you can't, uh, you can't collect those, and you're not going to get anything other than loot. You just get experience, essentially, and the dark event will be, uh, will be countered. So that's what we're hoping. Best case scenario, we're going to hack and get get the hell out of there. That would counter the dark event and would give us at least a partial success. And here we go. So we started concealed and I hope that that is going to stay concealed. Got only seven turns. But if we play our cards right, we might be able to hack uh, that console. Renvin starts moving. There's the first enemy pack. It would be absolutely fatal if we're now starting to fight against uh, them right away. So it's the first pick. There's probably another one like right at the point and somewhere here needs to be a third pick. Let's double check if there is a civilian down here. No, 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 no. Okay, good. Moving into cover. We could hack and gain what? That's not too bad. We could even do that after finishing the mission. If we could get a random enemy for basically two turns, which means one turn, that would be helpful. Of course, depending on which enemy we're going to get. Good, moving closer. Let's take a look. The mission objective is right here. This is a window that could see through it, so we might want to get somewhere here. The way to get there
pretty clearly includes going around the tower. Might move up to here. Problem is, uh, we don't know if there is someone directly in here. So that's a riskier path because you gotta move all the way around here. This here is basically the other option. Not a really good cover spot, but still okay. Moving closer. We've got the objective in sight. And we should be near the mission, the actual mission objective. We don't have a grenade, so can't kill the pack and they are going to spot us out so I guess one thing that we can do is being aggressive this is going to uh, remove concealment oh no it's not okay interesting anyways uh, this here is going to remove concealment Yep, hello guys. How's it going? Great, perfect. All right, workstation hack. Ooh, enemy protocol. That's pretty good. Um, our research isn't really that long so inside wouldn't give us all too much but enemy protocol you can't just not take it uh well it was worth a try well we certainly don't want to fight against reinforcements which means we're taking yet another loss. Good job, Renvan. Overall, well done. Of course, the official mission performance rating was a bit different than that. And we're coming back home with no further promotion. No item recovered, but dark event countered, rapid response. So we won't see we won't see reinforcements on every single mission, which is good. It's going way better than I would have expected. We even won. A single mission so far and we're almost in two regions good so we could make another contact but we're lacking the intel A little bit more into three areas. Three areas would already be pretty, pretty damn good. Giving us even more income. Because the income in our home area is going to get slaughtered over time. There are the modular rifles, which is good. We got an inspired resistance radio, which I'm okay to take. Uh, the advent, auto, uh, advent officer autopsy isn't bad either. And if we had more alien alloys, which we could buy from the black market, plated armor would certainly be an option as well. But let's get the radio and see what our continent bonuses are.
Good, we cleared some more alien debris. Klaus continues in the next section. And in terms of our next building, either training center, but that's maybe a bit early. I could also see laboratory because we're going to be really short on on scientists. Hmm. Let's actually go for the laboratory because I don't think that we're going to be done, uh, that we're going to get enough scientists elsewise. Okay, gained experience is good. Aim has increased. And we finally have made contact with the skirmishers. Any shredding attack does an additional one shred on the target is good. This here is pretty, pretty damn good. Vulture might as well want to take it. So, we still don't have a sergeant, so we can't make contact with the Reapers. But here's a 10 dodge and bond mission, which we're definitely going to do. Uh, so we're going to give dodge to our, uh, to our Templar. Absolutely fantastic mission. And if he gets a bond mate, that's even better because the bond mate will provide him will provide him with um, with reduced time for uh, for the actual execution of the mission. So let's see who who would make sense. I mean, we're going to use Roby and Renven as our as our candidates for the normal missions specialist and ranger might want to go with dark tower Naxus. templar sharpshooter is a combination but that could work not not that they are going to be on missions together but i could see this here skirmisher could also be a combination Let's go with the sharpshooter. Um, we don't have the supplies to negate the wounding chance, but I like the uh, forming of a soldier's bond. Plus 10 dodge on top of it is absolutely phenomenal. If Klaus pauses here and instead helps with the mission, we're down to eight days, which is just around the end of the month, which I would like to time both of uh, these events to, uh, at the same at the same time. I can see a huge advantage here uh, because uh, then we will be able to directly start the 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 resistance ring missions uh, beginning of next month and i'm even considering to leave klaus here for the time being because the resistance ring in this run is going to be our our main um, area of uh, progress all of the promotions will probably come from the resistance ring because we can promote a soldier within the resistance ring without the soldier effectively going on real missions the resistance ring can lead to ambush uh, activities, so bonus missions which we could really win, so that would be helpful. And the resistance ring also will give a lot of stat bony, which we will need in order to build up the soldier. The whole idea of the run is to get strong enough so that in the end game, one soldier can actually win missions. Uh, but that requires a lot of uh, a lot of um, 
covered up missions. So that's why it's so important to reduce the timing for the individual mission to an absolute minimum. Extract advent supplies, Operation Bleeding Blade. Well, the game notices that we're short on supplies, uh, Larium and Alloys, and it allows us to do the, um, a mission which we might even at least partially uh, win. So I would like to do this, but that's going to happen in our next run. As always, thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed the run so far. <laughs> I hope you liked it as well. My question for today's uh, video uh, would be, uh, if, you, if you were to pick a reward from a Covert Ops mission that is the best for this run, which one would it be? and why. Thank you so much for watching guys and see you soon. Bye bye.